salvation. Believe that God is going to speak to your heart, and as he speaks to you, your heart is going to be willing to say, Amen, Jesus. Lord, whatever it is that you want me to do, that's what I want to do. Amen. This morning was a great word about having the mind of Christ and protecting that mind. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. God, considering everything that's going on in the world around about us, Lord, we are blessed to be able to gather together here tonight freely, Lord, to exalt and lift up your precious name. Father, I thank you, Lord, your word says, those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit would say to the church. Father, we've come tonight to hear what you, Father, would say to your body. So, Lord, I thank you for Frank. I thank you for Natalie. I thank you, God, that all of these years, Father, you have placed them in our lives. Lord, they've been our friends. They've been our mentors. They've been our encouragers. God, they've been our cheerleaders. Lord, at times, they've come with suggestions and corrections. But, God, we thank you for them in our lives. And Father, tonight, we just open our hearts once again. We say, Holy Spirit, rule and reign in this place. God, speak to us, because we have an ear to hear what you desire to say to us. So we thank you, God, that we can come together. And Lord, we lift up our voices, we lift up our hands. God, we've come to celebrate you and to exalt your name. Thank you, Father God, for your many benefits. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you that you are a now God. Lord, that you are actively participating, leading and guiding and directing us, Lord, and even so that we might stay on that straight and narrow. So, Lord, we love you, and we thank you, God. We have come with expectant hearts. So, Holy Spirit, once again, have freedom in this place. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship the Lord together. Who is ready to praise tonight? Hallelujah!
very grateful for Frank and Yathlin Yathlin. Would you come on in? Just be obedient to whatever God has. Hallelujah. What a wonderful name. What a powerful name. What a beautiful name. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. The only name that could save us. That's right. It wasn't Buddha. It wasn't Allah. It wasn't this one, that one. It was Jesus. No God but Jehovah.
And in 1 Corinthians 6, it says that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's not just, you know, open or just, you know, he's pushing hard, he's trying to be. No. He is a new creature. That's your spirit, man. It's not the body. We still have the same. We, you know, the soul, have those emotions and thinking that we're trying to, you know, renew. But our spirit, psh, that's where you go. It doesn't have to clean itself up when it gets in. It's ready to go. We're spirit beings. And I'm wanting to start over again and be that, walk in that spirit realm, walk, walk in, that, in, in, that, in that new man that he's made us to be. And the church, we're in a place where we need to do that because the world needs to see, not people that look just like them, that cry up and complain about the same things that, you know, they're going through the same things, we're going through the same things. But they want to see somebody that they can look up to. They want an example. Knowing that, yeah, they're in the same place, but look at the glow on their face. Yes. Look how they're not complaining. Yes. But they're trusting their God. I want to know that God. Amen. Amen. So we cannot just be stirred in church, but not change. Amen. It is time. Yeah, praise God for singing, praise God for shouting and jumping. I love to do that. But it's time to be changed. It is time to change. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul, look, look at Paul's pedigree. You know, Hebrew of the Hebrews. You know, under, studied under Gamaliel and, it, it, you know, Pharisee of the Pharisees. I mean, he, all of that, and he said, it's just dumb. I want to know him. I want to know him. I'm determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified for me. That's Paul. Yes. So I want to be in that place where I'm determined to know nothing but that name we say about Jesus. Jesus. And you know, they're in the church. There's no limit. Again, there's no limit to the sermons of 24-7. We can hear them. We can see them on the TV, on the radio, whatever, on the internet. There's all kinds of information. Revelation, information. But how much application to our life? That's what we need to change. We need to appropriate what we're hearing. Because we're, we're, we're accountable to God for, for what we hear. If we're not walking it out with our feet. And he's just saying, do you love me more than all these things? Do you love me? You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only God son. But he's one who's going, do you love me? That, Jesus said, that's, that's the whole law. Love me. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. That's it. That is it. But we let things in our life, good or bad, get bigger than our God. Whether they're good, or look what I did, or the, some of the horrible things that we experience and we think, oh, God's not big enough to change any of this. And we lie to ourselves because he is a God of grace and of power and a God who still rescues us. He is a rescuer. He is a rescuer. It's so easy. It, it's so easy for our heart to get hardened by what's going around us. You know, the cares of the world, the cares of all of the stuff that we're bombarded with every day. And, and the deceitfulness of, of riches, if we get our minds on things, we can, we can harden our heart or tribulation that we're going through. And God says, a new heart, a new heart I'm giving you. And it's time for us to live in that realm of the Spirit. 
because no one can help us get a new heart. No one can help us get a new heart. It comes by returning to our first love. Returning to our first love. You know, we prophesy in, in churches, you know, we speak a word of a, a, a prophetic word, comfort, and edification, and exhortation. That's what First Corinthians talks about. You know, the, the, the gift of the uh, of prophecy. And, and we speak these things to one another. But the prophets in the Old Testament, the prophets in the Bible, they basically all, no matter what century they were in, no matter what king was ruling in Judah or Israel, they all had one message. Return. Return unto me. Get rid of your idols. Return. In, Jesus, in, in Revelation, Jesus, return to your first love. God is saying return. Return, get rid of the idols and your evil ways, and turn to me with all your heart. And he said that, he said that, as I said, to the nations, to the people, and he's saying to us, return. Return to me, because I still rescue you. If you return to me, I will return to you. And we said, we said that, God, I, do, I, I don't want your blessings. Uh, I, don't, I don't want, you know, you can, we can think in our minds, oh, I, I, I want to do this for you, or I, I want to achieve this for you. But it's really, I just want you. I just want you. Start all over again, because I just want you. I just want you, God. I just want you. To walk with you in that, in that part of us, you know, the body, it, it dictates, it, it, it dictates how, you know, I want this, I want that. It dictates what we want, our way. And the soul, you know, we can, like, we're, we're trying to renew our, our mind because we believe sometimes things that we think are right, they could be wrong. We, we, we feel which is so has been so prevalent in the church. How do you feel? You know, it's such a feely, feely, touchy, touchy church. And God is saying, I need you a spirit that's equal just like me. And to walk, walk in that spirit realm, it's time to start over and live from that spirit man created. Because created just like him. Because the Bible says in 1 John 4, as he is, so are we in this world. It's not as he is and so are you going to be in heaven. Yeah, we'll be like him in heaven. But he's saying, no. Well, we can't do that. You know, just in our body, in our body or, or in our mind, but in our spirit. This week as I was thinking about this and and we can get so stirred up with, with, you know, the cares of the world and worrying, you know, different problems that, that families are going through. And it can just weigh us down. But when we are walking in the spirit, they're gone. They are absolutely gone. You got it, God. And so if you got it, why am I going to worry about it? In his, in, in, in that spirit man that he made us to be, I tell you, it's, it makes it a whole lot easier. It makes our lives a whole lot easier. Different things this week started to come in. I thought, oh, wait a minute, I need the spirit. I can't follow me. Yeah, we can't because we choose. We choose, we make a decision to live in that third part that's been sitting dormant on a shelf that he made to be just like him here now in the 2022 and all the stuff that keeps changing, 
sometimes hourly by hourly, hour by hour. But I want to walk with you, God. Walk, you know, as I said, the, the, the world is looking for, they're looking for help. They're looking for answers, and we're the only ones that have it. We are the only ones that have it, and if we look like them, it's not going to, nothing will be, nothing will be changed. It's time for us to walk in that newness of life and realize it doesn't matter what it is, he knows what we're going through, he knows every situation and every problem, and he wants us to remember he is the God of all grace, but he's also the God of all he is the God that rescues. He is the God that still does wonders. Amen. He still does wonders. And in the, the message Bible, I just want to read a couple of these verses before, before Frank comes. This is from the message in Ephesians. Exchange that darkness of the past, no matter how distant or recent it is. Exchange it for the light of God. Exchange it for his light. We, we, we come out of darkness into his glorious light. You're, you're out in the open now. So no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true. These are actions appropriate for the daylight. Figure out what will please Christ and then do it. All right. Amen. Wake up from your sleep. I love this. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. And then no matter what it looks like, and some of us have been in dark, dark places that we have never been in before. He's got a light. And he says, whatever it is, no matter what it looks like, this is what God says. This is from Isaiah 43. This is what God says. The God, remember he's a rescue one? He's a God of wonders and he didn't change. He didn't, God's not going to backslide. He's the God who builds a road right through the ocean. <laughs> but he carves a path through pounding waves. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. How many of us do that? Amen. The past is not in the present. The past is not in the future. The past is in the past. Yes, it is. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? All you have to do is open our eyes. He's there. He is there. Everywhere. He's waiting for us to realize, here I am. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert and rivers in the bad lands. And we're living in a bad time. You know, sometimes I think, you know, we hear it on the news many times. The greatest nation, the greatest nation that ever was. And I'm going, okay, but it sure doesn't look like it now. It sure doesn't look like it now. But we are the people of God. Yes, we are. That have his message. That have his word. And he's waiting for us. Okay, you're my people? Act like it. You're my people? Walk with me. To me. Like Adam, that's all, that's all he wants. 
He wants to walk with us like he walked with Adam in the Garden of Eden, in the cool of the day. Just come out, let's, let's just talk. Let's just walk. Let's just be together. I want you, God. Starting over, just one in him and no other agenda. And then we keep talking about being a people that are just like Adam, just walking with God. It says in, in uh, Isaiah 51, it says, I, God, will comfort Zion, all her mounds of ruins. I'll transform her dead ground this is cool. I will transform her dead ground into the garden of Eden. That's what it says. I will transform your dead ground into flourishing, fertile Eden. I just want to walk with you. I just want to be with you. I just want you to want me. That's all he wants. He wants a people. That look just like him, because he made us like him, as he is so are we in this world. And that he just wants to be together and walk with us. No agenda can be saying about it. I don't want, I'm not here for blessings. I'm not here for agenda. I just want you. And there's peace. There is such peace in that. And the peace will be seen out there when we're confronted with such, you ever see, go to the store and you see some of the looks on some of the people's faces? I purposely just smile at them. And they change, the smile, when they put a smile on it, they're, they're changed too. Yeah. But they have to see a people. They have to see a people that are just like him. That's why you say, as I am, so are you in this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands just for another moment and just, just thank him, come on, just, just bless him. He is so worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. What a great God. What an awesome Jesus. He is so good. Come on. Oh, how we thank you, Lord. How we bless you. Such an awesome God, such a glorious God, such a wonderful God. How, how we bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord, yes. for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how we magnify your name, God. How we magnify your name and bless you. Holy are you.
and and so we just become just great great friends. And uh, how many times over these years I, I heard the phone ring and pick it up and it would be TJ and he say, oh you know uh, I just cooked some fish. We got plenty. Or Becky's just cooking chicken. Come on eat with us. <laughs> And we've done that. And then I never forget in uh, in 2000 when we had our trailer built, we had to take all of our stuff out. And, and, and of course, it wasn't the building that we have now. Pastor Matt let us have one of the Sunday school rooms and we put all of our stuff in that. And we were waiting while they were building our trailer in Elk Park, Indiana. And we were going to go get a hotel room. And, TJ, he came over one day and said, what you guys going to do? And I said, well, we're going to go get, no, you're not. Because he had a big motor home. Him and Becky had a motor home. He said, when they pull that out, we'll just back ours in. You can stay in it. And, so, and we did. Yeah. How they did. <laughs> we did. We lived in it for uh, about a month or longer while they were building our RV over, over in Elk Park, Indiana. So we are family. And we just thank God that the two daughters, we just got more than two, but the girls were here when we first started coming. And uh, now one of them, Teresa, is a medical doctor and has a medical practice over in Birmingham, I think it is. And, what? Well, Southfield. Southfield, over in, in, over in Southfield, medical, 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 medical doctor. Uh, and so we're just so thankful. We're just so thankful for them and our relationship and friendship and that they have been as long as, along with all of the you others that are here but, but I just want to peek back just for another moment or two, just for a few more minutes. And I want you to go into to Ephesians chapter 4. Because Matthew was emphasizing and talking and talking about the Holy Spirit. And, uh, uh, I, 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 and as far as I'm concerned, he is the most important person. The most important person on the earth today. Somebody say it's the Holy Ghost. Am I right? He's the one who abides in us, as she said. He leads us. He guides us. He convicts us. And he's the one who has sealed us, right? And he's endeavoring. Daily. De endeavoring daily to develop and build his character in us. Come on, amen? And because of that, I say that his work his work, Sister Madlock, his work is the most important that is in the earth. Somebody say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, amen. amen. And he's a person, right? Yes, he he's a person. He's the third part of the Trinity. Yes, he is. And he lives and he, and he abides on the inside of us, right? Amen. And so it's important. It's important, especially... Boy, if there's anything that we've ever needed to be sensitive to in this hour in which we live and where we're at, I'm telling you, it is so important that we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, that we be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Come on, amen? amen. To the Spirit of God that is on the inside of us and cooperate with Him. And especially, and especially that we don't breathe Him. Come on, amen? amen. I said it especially that we don't breathe him because when we breathe him, when we breathe him, then that hinders. Yes. See, that hinders, that hinders him from fulfilling the plans of God in our life. Yes. And I don't know about you, I want to become, just like the song that we sung, I want to become more aware yes. of his presence. Come on, right? more aware of Him. Oh, that I can become more skillful in the way that I am led by Him in hearing from Him and in yielding myself to Him because I do not want to stop what He wants to do in my life. Amen. And you know what? Neither do you. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thinking is not thinking. T-H-I-N-K-I-N-G is not T-H-A-N-K-I-N-G. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I could, I, I could go over to, to TJ's and Becky's and I could, I could pig out and I mean, you know, have two or three up and 
speak which I do. <laughs> and if I never responded and said, oh man, Becky, that was so good, or, or did they, that fish, man, you really cooked it just, they wouldn't know, right? Same way with God. We can think about how good God is and how faithful He is, and He is a faithful God, right? Amen. I said, He's been faithful all my life, all my life. He's been faithful. Just not to me, but how do you know he's been faithful to us? Even when we were not serving him. Come on. Even when we were not living for him. Amen. Like the song says, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. I'm telling you, that's God. He's a good God. Amen. I said he is a good God. He's a good God. And I don't want to hinder anything. Anything that he has for my life and I don't want to see anything that God has for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. I don't want to see anything, yes. anything that God has for us. So, so tell me real quickly because this is where we're, we're, we, we, are, we are emphasizing the Holy Spirit. So yes. I want to show you something from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Look what he says. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Yes. It's interesting. If you notice, it says grieve not. That word grieve is an interesting word. It literally means to cause heaviness, to experience sorrow, yes. to make one easy, no. to offend. If you really search it out in the Greek, it denotes the, the emotions of, of a portrayed spouse having been lied to and deceived. In other words, the Holy Spirit is living and abiding on the inside of us, right? Amen. He is the one who has delivered us out of sin. Yes. Come on, right? Amen. He gives us wisdom, yes. right? He gives us Jesus is our Savior. Come on, amen. But the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us. He's the one who guides us, right? He gets you on the other side of that situation that you didn't know how in the how am I going to make it? Come on, amen. And God, the Holy Spirit, gets us out of it. How many of you glad tonight for the work of the Holy Ghost? The work of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says you can grieve the one who's done the most. You can grieve the one who's done the most because you're not listening and, you're, and, and, and you've allowed yourself, you know, to grieve him. You've allowed yourself to cause him sorrow when he's the one who has been there all the time. And so he equates it to like a marriage and someone that's betrayed one another. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is saying, I've been there for you. How is it? How is it that you're treating me this way? James picks up that same thought in James chapter 4. He, he really is strong. In James chapter 4 and verse 4, he brings it out even more. He says, you adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. See, it was a spiritual adultery. That they were going away from God. They weren't living for God. They weren't doing the things, you know, that, that they should have been doing. And he was calling them adulterers. I like what the Amplified Version says. The Amplified says, like a spouse that's cheated on another person. Amen. So when you're talking about grieving the Holy Spirit, you're talking about someone that has done so much for your life. Come on, amen. And yet we're not treating him that way. We're taking liberties. I submit to you, we, we, we want revival. Yes. And, 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 and God knows we need revival. Yes. I'm telling you, the only hope for America is God. Yes. I said the only hope tonight for America is God. Yes. Oh, we need God. I am telling you, we need God more than we need another breath. That's how much we need God in this hour. 
be our world. We talked about it this morning, right? As a man thinks, so is he in his heart, right? We talked about this morning, and, and we saw that how, how our culture, how that the, oh, God help us in this hour. We need a move of God. We need the glory of God. We need God to show up, not just out there in the world. We need God to show up in the house of God. We need God to show up in the church. Yes. Right? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Because, you know, we, 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 the truth of the matter is just like Natalie said. You know, we, we, we are not where we ought to be or where we should be. Thank God I'm not where I used to be. <laughs> but thank him also that I am not where I want to be. Turn to somebody and say, I just want more of him. Hallelujah. Say, I, want, I, I do. I want more of him. Hallelujah. And so it's interesting here in, in, in Ephesians chapter 4. And I just want to read the word. I just love reading the word. It is just conviction. <laughs> reading the word, right? I, the, 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 the new... The New Amendment translation says, do not bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit by the way you live. <laughs> and the surrounding verses that we're going to look at for just a few moments show us how we grieve the Holy Spirit. And remember here in Ephesians chapter 4, he's not talking to the heathens. He's not talking to the lost. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to the church. He's talking to believers. He's talking to you and I. And look what he says in verse 25. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Wherefore, put in a way lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. How many of you know when we're not truthful in the way that we live? When we're not truthful in the way that we talk? How many of you know it grieves the Holy Ghost? I said it grieves the Holy Spirit. Then the way it says in verse 26, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. How many of you understand that our anger grieves the Holy Spirit? It grieves the Holy Ghost. And then he goes on down in verse 27. He says, Neither give place to the devil. Most translations say, don't give him an opportunity. But the Bible says, don't give place to the devil. Someone says, well, what do you mean by that? I remember when I used to pastor, sometimes, especially on midweek services. Now we don't have midweek services. But when I was growing up, we used to, you know, <laughs> of course, I'm a, I'm a PK. That, that, that's a preacher's kid. And when I was growing up, you know, I got drugged every day, you know, because we had church all the time <laughs> when I was growing up. I, I'm not complaining about it, but when I was growing up, we had, I mean, we had revival. I mean, when, when we had revival, uh, they, didn't even, they didn't even plan a revival unless it was going to be at least two weeks. I, I mean, that's how it was back then, <laughs> you know, so, so I got drugged at church I was on drugs. I got drugged at church. All the, all the time, <laughs> you know, and 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 and, and you know, it's, we, we, midweek services. You know, you 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 were in the house of God. I I I often remind myself of this when I was growing up. You know, and I I, I was in school in high school. I played sports. I loved sports. I played all still love them. I played all four sports. But you know, in the in the area that I grew up in, on Wednesday nights. They never scheduled a ball game. Now, we always played our football games on Friday night, but when we played basketball games, they would be on, you know, different nights rather than just Friday nights, you know. But we, we always had, you know, during, during the week, except on Wednesday night, no schools in the area that I grew up in had basketball games. Why? That was midweek service. Everybody was going to church. Come on, right? Everybody was going to church. And, 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 and I said all of that to say, when I used to pastor sometimes on Wednesday night's midweek service, we'd have folk give testimonies, you know, about the goodness of God. And I'm telling you, sometimes when they got through testifying, 
I was more discouraged than I was encouraged because everything that they came out of their mouth was about the devil. And I'm saying, now wait a minute. I don't serve a big, big devil. I serve a big God. Come on, man. And I'm not here. I, I don't deny that he's not there, but I refuse to give him recognition. Come on, amen. Yeah. I said, if you belong to God, no weapon that it's going to get you, right? Yeah. If you belong to God, nothing can happen that God don't allow to happen. Amen. <laughs> so I just refuse. And that's what he said here. He said, don't give place to the devil. Look what he says in verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Pray your neighbor say, I'm glad he's not talking. I hope he's not talking about you right now. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, yes. the thing which is good that he might have to give to him that need it. Yes. Let him that what? Stole steal. I'm not going to talk about tithes. How many of you know it's not about money anyway? It's about grieving the Holy Ghost. It's about stopping the power of God from manifesting. It's not about money. It's about, come on, amen. amen. It's about obedience. I give my tithe. Come on, amen. I give. Remember this morning I used that verse of scripture, you know, uh, that God shall supply all of our needs, you know. You know, talking about what's going on today in the world. See, I don't live in this world. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know things are expensive. Like I said this morning, $150 to fill my truck up. But I'm not going to complain about it. I can't. Why? Because I got the money to do it. Right? <laughs> I may not like it. Come on, right? Amen. And the reason that I have it, that I can do it, is because I'm a giver. Yes. Turn to someone and say, me too. Me too. Come on, right? Hallelujah. The way he says in verse 29. Listen to what he said now. We, we, won't, we won't revive it, right? So we got to get ourselves ready for it, prepared for it. Look what it says in verse 29. Let no what? Communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is to the use of, that it may minister unto the hearers. I like what the Amplified says. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk come out of your mouth. But only such as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. In other words, church, we should not let any of these things proceed out of our mouth. Why? Because it grieves the Holy Spirit. Yes. When we talk about one another, are we gossip? Yes. Are we use foul language? Yes. I, I'm I'm just being honest tonight. I, 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 my mind get, gets blown sometimes when I go up into some churches and get into their parking lots and they don't know that I'm standing there or I'm close by and hear the words that come out of not just the young people but even older folks. I mean, it's like the F word has become, it's like we, we have no Help us in this hour, of God. Amen. I mean, I can't believe. Believe. Church-going kids. Christians. I'm telling you. What does it do? What does the Bible say it does? It what? It grieves. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Right? When we say things we shouldn't be saying. Talking the way we shouldn't be. We were sitting not long ago with a couple, you know, from a, you know, with, with, with a church background. And we're sitting there and we're eating. And all of a sudden, coming out of the brother's mouth is the SOP word. And I'm saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? I mean, who puts God in this hour? Turn to someone and say, it grieves. It grieves. Say, it grieves the Holy grieves. Spirit. Come on, right? So that's what Paul is saying. Our words should be should be beneficial to the spiritual progress of others as it is fitting to the need. 
an occasion that it may be a blessing and give great grace, God's favor to those who hear it. So the way we talk, the way we talk about ourselves, the way we talk down on ourselves, yeah. I'll never be anything. Come on, I, we can't learn. Using words against ourselves, listen to me, I'm telling you, it grieves. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Come on, amen? amen. Right, I said, it, when we use words against one another, and it brings strife in the home, and we're bickering, and we're fighting in the home, it grieves the Holy Spirit, the one who lives in you. That's right. So our speech, somebody say our speech, our speech. should be skillful. And beneficial to one another. Come on, amen? See how we speak to one another. How we talk about ourselves. What kind of words are we throwing around? Because according to scriptures, it matters. We can grieve the Holy Spirit when we walk around talking fear, doubt, and unbelief. And then we have nothing but fear in our mouths. But remember... The Bible says that God has not given unto us the spirit, spirit, but of God, power, power, and of love, yes, and of a sound mind. One of the things that I said in 2020 about the pandemic, I said, you know, the pandemic, the pandemic didn't, it didn't, it didn't bring the fear. It didn't produce the fear. It revealed the fear. It revealed the fear, the fear that was in us. I mean, we were afraid, and, and we still have it some today, still have it some today. Even in the church, we're afraid to come to church and pray somebody's going to cough. Yeah. Oh, God, help us say this out. I, I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't use wisdom. we got to use wisdom. Come on, amen. But I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to be frightened. I'm not going to be afraid to go to church, fearing that I might catch the COVID. Or I'm just not going to, I'm not going to live that way. Because God has not given me that kind of spirit. He's given me peace and joy. Come on, amen. In the Holy Ghost. Wear your mask if you want to wear your mask. Get your vaccination if you want to get your vaccination. But I am not going to live in a world that is full of fear. I don't live. I am in this world, but I am not in this world. I belong to another kingdom. I belong to the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, there is no fear. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God, there is no fear. Because every morning when I get up, the first thing I do is I, I, I cover myself with the blood. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I cover myself with the blood. Every time that's when I get into the truck, to wherever it may be, the first thing we do is we grab hands uh, and, 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 and we come against any kind of danger, any kind of snare that the enemy We cover ourselves with the blood and we release angels around us. I am not going to live in your world of fear. Amen. I'm going to live, come on, amen, in power and in love. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, love cast it out. Fear. All love, fear. all fear. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, say, turn to my say, you can. Come on, amen. Can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, you can. You can. Hallelujah. So notice it says, it says, don't let... Don't let any, any rotten communication, any rotten communication, verse, verse, did I read verse 29? Yes. Okay, I read verse 29. Yes. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, 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 okay, verse, okay. <laughs> it, uh, he says, don't let any kind of fear or doubt or unbelief, because if, if we do that, that's all we're going to have in our mouth is fear. How we can't do this, and how we can't do that. When the scripture says that you can, all things are possible. <laughs> Come on, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Nothing is impossible. We, we sing it this week, Cindy's sitting back there, and for those of you who don't know her, her, her parents used to come here. Some, here a lot of folks are passing out, like Sister Mal, like all of them know, who were the Mises, and that's their daughter, Cindy, that we were just talking about a few moments ago. And that's another 40 year relationship almost. And, 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 uh, 
and, and, and her husband, uh, our good buddy uh, Ed, had, was, was in the hospital, he still is in the hospital. He's been in the hospital since what, May? June, been in the hospital six June, since June with all kinds of blood clot, clots and, you know, they're saying, you know, you're on the verge of dementia and, and, and he was way downtown in the hospital, way downtown in Detroit, Henry Ford downtown and it was difficult for her to get down there, you know, every day to be able to visit with him and we picked her up last Monday and we took her down and we drove down to the hospital, went into the room, <laughs> and for somebody, you know, who's supposed to have dementia, he sure knew who we were. <laughs> he knew who we were. <laughs> knew who we were. <laughs> and uh, and I, when I said, who am I? He knew exactly who we were. And we prayed and we believed God. And he said, God, you know, we're believing for complete recovery, for full recovery, for his healing. And until that Lord, you're asking you to have him removed to a place that he'd be close to the Sterling Heights where they lived at, live at so that Cindy could go every day and see him and his kids and his grandkids. Uh, and war below what looked like was impossible. They called her that next day. <laughs> a couple of days after that, they called her and said, he's being moved right now. Spirit. 
Do not quench or suppress or subdue the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, amen. amen. Remember, he's talking to us as believers. In, in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, he's called the Spirit of holiness. And in Peter, in the book of Peter, we're, we're, we're admonished to be holy in all manner of life and conversation. That's talking about lifestyle. To be living a lifestyle of holiness. Come on, amen. amen. I'm not talking about necessarily how you dress. To me, the definition of holiness is Christ worked out in every area of your life. That's right. To me, that's what holiness is. Some folks think it's a bun. Some folks think it's somebody without any makeup. Oh, God, help us. <laughs> but it's just the nature of Christ worked out in every area of our lives. Oh, God, help us in this hour. Help, help us in this hour. In, in, in. I mean... That we can say if there's anything that's not pleasing to you, I'm open to the Lord God. I'm conscious when I get up in the morning. I'm conscious of the way I'm thinking, what I'm listening to. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. He's talking about Christians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 14. Uh, of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 it says be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers that means people that don't believe like you or an unbeliever that's not born again it's, <laughs> one of the things that amazes me as I travel throughout the body of Christ is especially the young people that are, that are not married and dating and dating they are, they are believers but they are dating unbelievers well, I'm going to get them saved. Listen, if Jesus can't get them saved, how are you going to get them saved? Come on, amen. And, and it goes on down in verse 15, and it says, And what concord hath Christ with Bela? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be, that, that spirit of being, that's what he was talking about. Right? Amen. And verse 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. He's talking about lifestyles here. Come on, amen. Coming out from the world. Coming out from sin. Coming out from, from, from places. You know, not fellowshipping with things that are ungodly. Choosing relationships outside of godliness. Right? That's what he's talking about. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I believe it is, verse 1, it says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Turn your neighbor and say, it has to be a choice. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfected what? Holiness in the fear of God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, most Christians that I know are not interested in going to hell. Amen. But they also are not interested in Jesus being Lord. Taking over their lives completely. To his will 100%. Well, I, I, I just don't know about all of that. We're holding on to things that he wants to release. Not that he's trying to control our lives. How many of you know God wants to bless our lives? Yes. Come on, amen? amen. He wants the power to flow free through our lives. Sometimes it's not all these big sins. Sometimes it's just the way we treat people. That's right. The way we do things. Come on, amen? amen? And the Holy Spirit is endeavoring to say to us, don't do that. And we need to listen. Not only do we need to recognize and be sensitive to the Spirit of God that is in us, 
but may I submit that you in closing tonight more than every more than any time and, 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 I, and I know Deb, Debbie mentioned this thing a couple of times and I, we, we, we need to hear what the Spirit is saying yes. I, I think sometimes we become so desensitized in the church especially today we become so desensitized when we listen to things that we shouldn't be listening to. Remember this morning? I told you one of the ways that the enemy does, he's, you know, it's slow to follow Paul. He, he introduces things to us through television, mm -hmm. lifestyles. Amen. I mean, remember this morning, it's hard to see a commercial now on television, you know, without it pertaining to you know, to, to the gay community. That's another reason I don't support. That's another reason I don't support the party that's in charge right now. I'm not in the same-sex marriage. Amen. It's not scriptural. Amen. Living together without being married is not scriptural. The Bible calls it fornication. I'm not talking about out there in the world. I'm talking about in the church. In the church. And then we wonder why we don't have a move of God. We wonder why we don't have revival. We, don't, we wonder why the glory doesn't come down. It's like the priest who as they went up the steps to minister in the tabernacle, their, their robe had to be long enough that it covered their ankles. Why? Because no flesh shall glory in the presence of God. I was recently talking to a pastor friend of mine, and we got into this conversation about the culture, and he said, yeah, I, I know I've got some people in my, I've got, you know, some couples in my church that are not married. I said, well, do you ever speak about it? Well, no. I said, what? <laughs> you never make a mention of it? It's about money. And then we wonder why the glory don't show up. We wonder why God don't show up. Why there's not the healings and the miracles. I, I, I heard I, I heard a story I'm, I'm closing but I heard a story not long ago about this guy every time revival came to town or every time there was a revival in a church just from church to church you know getting in the prayer line praying for God that he needed a miracle in his body he needed God to heal him and so he was in the prayer line every time and he came into this particular prayer line one night and this the, 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 the preacher that was ministering and then after the word was praying for people he got a word of knowledge when the guy came in to be prayed for and he looked at the guy and he said hey did you pay your tithes and the guy said no he said well I'm sorry I'm not going to pray for you God ain't going to heal you right. now that's not somebody that's just coming into the church but some guy that had been in church for a long time let him to steal steal no more no more let me close with this. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you will hear his voice, so that faith cometh by hearing. and hearing by, by, by the word of God. So that faith cometh by what? Hearing. Not what you have heard, but what you are hearing. So that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. Harden not your hearts as in the publication. In the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, listen to what God said, proved me and saw my works for 40 years, wherefore I was what? Grieved, verse 10, with that generation. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And how many know it was God? It was God's will for them to enter into the rest of the promised land. It was God's will for his power to flow into their life. But he said they grieved me. They suppressed the power of what I wanted to do in their lives. 
He's talking about the children of Israel. But then notice the next verse, verse 12. Take ye, brethren. Take ye, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. What he's saying is, just like they were unable to go into the promise, just like they were unable, you know, that they received the things that God had for them and wanted to do for them, they didn't enter in because of unbelief. They wouldn't obey. And so he says to you and I, take heed. Pay attention. Yes. Pay attention. Lest you fall into the same thing and, in, and have an evil heart of unbelief. So their sin and their rebellion kept them out of what God had for them. The Bible calls it a hard heart. Yes. A, heart a heart that is unmoved by the Word. They sat here in the Word, but they were still going to do what they wanted to do. So the children of Israel heard the Word they should respond, but they wouldn't because they viewed it as optional, not as this is what I need to do. And I'm telling you, as we travel throughout the body of Christ, we've been going down. I started the first weekend in January, and I won't finish up until Thanksgiving. We'll get back home sometime. Uh, just before Thanksgiving and drop our RV and then drive to Florida and minister for a weekend and then back home. But one of the things that leaves me as I travel, you know, as I travel, I, 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 I see so many people in this hour that are taking the word as assumption, as something optional. But it's not. It is not optional. It is not optional. It is if you want it to be, but then like the children of Israel, you don't get to go in. You don't get to go in <laughs> to what God has for you. And I believe God has a whole lot more for us. Come on, amen. How many believe God has a lot more for you? A lot more for your life. Come on, amen. A lot more for our families. I believe God has a lot more for Calvary, missionary church. I, 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 I believe God. I, oh, I, I believe God has so much for this area, for, for, for our I mean, we, we need God with the violence and the hatred. I mean, the black and the white. Oh, God. Like TJ and Cindy. They're my brother, my brother, my sister. Amen. We're family. <laughs> That's why I can sit down at this table, hallelujah. And I can eat and enjoy. We're family. We're family. And, and that's, that's why we need God so desperately to move in our nation. And God can only through, do it through a people. Through a people. Through a people as Nathalie said, that are not like them. He's looking for a difference. He wants us to be different. That's right. Wants us to be different. That's why he went into the temple and took that whip and ran the money changers out and overturned the tables. He didn't care if they were selling tapes out in the foyer. That wasn't what was upsetting him. The thing that upset him is there was no distinction. There was no difference in what was going on in the church and what was going on in the world. Because out there on the streets, they were selling turtle doves. They were selling turtle doves so that you would have an offer to be able to go into the temple. And they'd take the same turtle dove and sell it over and over and over and over and over just so that you could go into the temple. And God said, no, no, no. There needs to be a distinction. I don't want you angry like the world. I don't want you talking like the world, acting like the world. We are one body. Come on, amen? amen. <laughs> when God made us, he made us as one. <laughs> he did, hallelujah. And so we got to, we got to as a church, 
come to that place where we just read about tonight, where we make that decision. It's our choice. We have to choose. We have to choose. Holy Spirit, I'm not going to grieve you. I don't want to grieve you. I want to see you move. And not just move, I want to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. Don't you feel that way? Let's just stand to our feet and just lift your hands. Would you? Let's just stand. Come on, hallelujah. Lord. <laughs> oh, Father. We, you know, remember what I said this morning? What is so wonderful about being in the presence of God? Right where you're at, if you're sitting or if you're standing, you can make adjustments right where you're at. All you have to do is say, God, forgive me. If I breathe you, O Lord God. <laughs> Check yourself out. Examine yourself. That's what the word says. Examine yourself. And oh God, if, if I if I've let anger, Lord God. Oh, Father God. If I've let strife. Oh, if I've been insensitive. Oh God. Oh God, forgive me, oh Lord. Oh, forgive me, God. If I've had off against my brother or against my... Oh, God, forgive me, Lord. Oh, God. We want to see you move. I want to see you move in Pontiac. Now, when I have time here, we have spent time in prayer. We want to see a move of God. God, we want to see a move in your church. Oh, Father God, in those who call themselves believers of the Lord. We want to see you move even greater in our lives. Help us to be more significant. Oh, Father God. Oh, God, let us not be like Israel, God, who you brought out of Egypt, but Egypt never came out of them. Oh, God, help us. Oh, help us, Lord, God. Oh, oh, if we have unforgiveness in our hearts, oh, God, help us to get over it, Lord, God. Oh, to, for to forgive, Lord. So that we don't breathe, Lord. We don't quench your spirit. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' name. Can I ask this? If you would, if you would please, if, if, if to just sense it so strongly in my spirit, if we could just, as a body, we can just for a moment step out of our seats and let's just let's just come down to the front in just a moment and let's just let's just gather around the altar just just for a moment just for a moment real quickly oh hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus oh wonderful Jesus thank you Lord thank you God just for a moment Oh, Father God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Just as you're standing there, just, just begin to just, just, just say Jesus. Just begin to take a few moments, a few minutes here, just, just talk to him. Just, just say, oh God, oh God, check me, Lord God. If there are areas, Lord, help me, Lord God. I'm, I'm open to you right now, Lord. I open my heart to you right now. I open myself to you, Lord. I open myself to you right now, Lord. Oh, Father, areas of oh Lord God that, that maybe as we just read God's word tonight, and they just they just prick your heart. They just, oh, that's an area I need to work in right now, God. We thank you right now, Lord. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, you remember from this morning, if you haven't been thankful enough, Oh, if you haven't thanked God enough. Oh, oh, if you haven't, if you haven't thanked Him and blessed Him enough. Oh, God, don't grieve Him. 
Don't grieve him by not thanking him. Don't, don't grieve him by not blessing him. Come on, amen. We thank you, Lord. Oh, what a mighty God you are, Lord. Oh, how we bless you, Lord God. Oh, God. Oh, God, thank you, Lord God. Oh, if there's an area in my life, oh, Lord God, oh, that's holding up my healing or holding up my miracle, oh, Lord God. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, God. Don't let me steal anymore, Lord. Don't, don't let me steal, steal time. Time that I should be with you, oh, Lord God. And, Oh, God, and I take that time from you and I give it to something else that's frivolous, that doesn't have much meaning. It doesn't, it's not life-giving. Oh, God, help us tonight, Lord God. Oh, Father. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, this morning, Lord. Tonight, God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Oh, how we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Continue to strengthen Cindy tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, for the miracle you're doing in her husband, God, in his life. We thank you now, Lord. We release and resurrection life into him right now, Lord. We thank you right now, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, strengthen her, oh God. Let your peace, oh God, come into her mind right now, Lord. Oh, we bless her.
how she served uh, in the military when she was called on, how she went to New York and you protected her and kept her during COVID, God, and she was there taking care of the sick. We thank you for that. We pray your blessings upon her, oh God, and upon her practice, oh Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, God. We bless you. Yes, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God. Oh, mighty God, we thank you tonight. Oh, how we thank you tonight, God. Refresh it and renew it, oh, Lord God. Refresh it and renew it. Pour out the wall. Pour out the oil. fresh oil. That's what you say in Psalms 92. I shall be anointed with fresh oil, Lord. Let the fresh oil of God be released and poured out of God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch, touch Patty tonight, God. Physically, mentally, oh, Lord, God. Put your peace in her house, oh, Lord, God. Oh, come against any kind of division and strife and this is all in the name of Jesus and release your glory and your presence and your power Lord God. We speak peace oh Lord God. Oh Father in the name of Jesus. Oh in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Oh God for the wind needs a miracle God. We need a miracle God for his body for his legs for his circulation
and mightier and stronger, O oh Lord God. We thank you tonight, O oh Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, O God. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name.
We thank you, Lord God. We bless you, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Marlon Gay, where you at? Hallelujah. You great woman of God. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, God, you are a God of wonders. And you are a God of miracles, Lord God. We ask you to make Marlon Gay a wonder, Lord God. From the crown of her head to the soap for her, Brother Glenn, Brother yes. Lord God. Father, you said pertaining to the children of Israel, when you brought them out of Egypt, there was not one people, one among them, Lord God. They just brought out of Egypt for God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And we take authority over this infirmity that has attacked your fathers, Oh, God, and we speak healing and health and openness and life. And life to the beam, to the leg, to the blood system, every bone in the name of Jesus. Yes, Thank you. 